we are in section 7.3, Optimizing Functions of Two Variables. In chapter 3, we learned how to find maximums and minimum points using calculus. This is an extremely important application, especially in business. We figure out where we can minimize cost or maximize revenue. When we now extend this idea to find the extrema of a function with two variables, and formally we can think of the relative extrema as a high point or a low point on the surface, z equals f of x comma y. And so you'll see there's a diagram given right below. And in that diagram you can see our relative maximums. And then you can also see when we have relative minimums. So a function has a relative minimum at a point AB if f of AB is less than or equal to f of xy in some region containing AB. A function has a relative maximum at the point A comma B if f of A comma B is greater than or equal to f of x comma y in some region containing A comma B. The other thing you'll note in the picture is a saddle point and we'll get to that in just a moment. So right now the location of extrema says let z equal f of x comma y have a relative maximum or relative minimum at the point a comma b. Let the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y both evaluated at point a comma b exist. Then if the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to zero and the partial derivative with respect to y equals zero. And so these, as you can think of what we saw before, in the semester, these are our critical values, our critical points would be occurring here. On the next page, we get into the idea of the saddle point. So a saddle point is going to have a minimum while approaching from one direction, but a maximum while approaching from a different direction. You can see that it looks like a saddle that you would put on a horse. And so this is neither a maximum nor a minimum. It's called a saddle point. So definitely something to know. And then critical points, again, are going to be the point a comma b, such that the partial derivative with respect to x is equal to zero, and the partial with respect to y is equal to zero. So the first example that we have says to find all critical points for, and our function is f of x comma y equals 4x cubed plus 3xy plus 4y cubed. So first thing we need to do is find our partial with respect to x. And then again, this means take the derivative with respect to x, treating x as the variable and y as the constant. So the first term we have is 4x cubed, which does have x in it. Taking that derivative, we get 12x squared plus, and then we have 3xy, and remember the 3 and y are constants, so those would stay out in front. The derivative of x is just 1. And then the derivative of 4y cubed would just be 0 since there are no x's involved. Then we also need to find the partial with respect to y. So again, taking the derivative this time though, y is our variable and x is our constant. So the first term only has x's in it, and so that would be zero. And then we have three x, y, the three and the x are constants and those would stay. Derivative of y is just one. And then the derivative of four y cubed to become 12 y squared. And we're set each of these equal to zero. And so for this, you'll notice that we have two unknowns and two equations. And so we actually have a system. And so rewriting this, we know that our system is going to be 12x squared plus 3y is equal to 0. And also 3x plus 12y squared is equal to 0. And so we can go ahead and solve our first equation for y, since that would be the easier one to solve for. In doing that, we would have 12x squared equals negative 3y, and then dividing both sides by negative 3, we get y would be equal to negative 4x squared. From here, we're going to substitute this in for y in my second equation. And so we have 3x plus 12 times y squared, but instead of y, we're going to write negative 4x squared. Squared is equal to 0. So simplifying this, we have 3x, and then we have, since it's negative 4x squared, this would work out to being 16x to the fourth. So 12 times 16 would be 192, so it's positive. And then x to the fourth is equal to zero. From here, we can factor out our GCF, which would be 3x. 
left over with 1 plus 64x to the third is equal to 0. Setting each of these factors equal to 0 using our zero product property. Solving the first one, we just get x is 0. Solving the second equation, I'm going to subtract 1 and divide by 64. So I get x cubed equals negative 1 over 64. And then taking the cube root on both sides, and remember cube root does not get that plus or minus, but we do get a value of x equals negative 1 over 4. And so these two values here that we have are critical values. And so in order to find our critical points, we need to also find the y values. So the easiest thing to substitute these into would be y equals negative 4 x squared. And so substituting in 0, we get 0. So we know the order pair 0, 0 is one of our critical points. The second one, we need to substitute in negative 1 fourth. So we have negative 4 times negative 1 fourth squared, which works out to being negative 4 times positive 1 16th, or negative 1 fourth. So our other critical point would be negative 1 fourth comma negative 1 fourth. And so our critical points are going to be at 0 comma 0 and at negative 1 fourth comma negative 1 fourth. Right below this, we have the test for relative extrema. So definitely something we need to know. So the test for relative extrema says for a function z equals f of x comma y, let the second order partial derivative with respect to x twice and the second order partial derivative with respect to y twice and the partial derivative with respect to x and then the partial with respect to y all exist in a circular region contained in the xy plane with center a comma b. Further, let the partial with respect to x equals 0 and the partial with respect to y equals 0, which we saw was our critical values. Then we have what's called the discriminant, d. So d is equal to the second order partial derivative with respect to x twice times the partial with respect to y twice minus that second order partial derivative with respect to x, then y squared and note that they are all evaluated at that point a, b. And then if f of a comma b is a relative maximum, then our discriminant would be greater than zero and the second order partial derivative with respect to x twice is gonna be less than zero at point a comma b. Likewise, f of a comma b is gonna be a relative minimum if d is greater than 0 and the second order partial derivative with respect to x twice is greater than 0. We have a saddle point if d, our discriminant, is less than 0. And then if d is equal to 0, the test gives no information. So the same information is given on the table on the next page. And so this says in summary, and I personally prefer this table. I think it's a little bit easier to read. One of the columns here is going to be when our second order partial derivative with respect to x twice is either less than zero or greater than zero. And then our rows are those different values that our discriminant could be. So either greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. The example right below says find all points where the functions have any relative extrema. That would be relative minimums or relative maximums. It also says to identify any saddle points if we have one of those. So part A says f of x, y equals 3x, y plus 6, y minus 5x. And so in order to figure this out and determine if we have relative extrema or saddle point, so we need to find our discriminant. And in order to come up with our discriminant formula, we're going to need second order partial derivatives. So in order to do this, we need to find our first order partial derivatives. So taking our partial derivative with respect to x, our constant in the first term would be 3y, and then taking the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. Taking the derivative of 6y with respect to x is 0. Minus 5x, taking the derivative of that with respect to x would also just be minus 5. And then we have our partial with respect to y. The first term 
3x would be a constant y, the derivative of that's just 1, plus the derivative of 6y is just going to be 6, and the derivative of negative 5x with respect to y is just a constant, so that would be 0. So determining our critical points, we need to set these each equal to 0. And we can solve the first equation, we get y is equal to 5 thirds. And solving our second equation, we get x is equal to negative 2. So from this, we know that our critical point is going to occur at negative 2 comma 5 thirds. So from here, in order to find our discriminant, we need our second order partial derivative with respect to x twice. And so looking at our first partial derivative, first order partial derivative with respect to x at the very top, it's 3y minus 5, and taking the derivative of that with respect to x again, you'll notice that there are no x's, that whole thing's a constant, so this would be just 0. And then taking our second order partial derivative with respect to y a second time, looking at our first order partial derivative with respect to y, we have 3x plus 6, which has no y's in it, so taking a derivative of that would just be 0. And then taking the derivative with respect to x, then with respect to y, for our second order partial derivative, we are going to have the derivative with respect to x is 3y minus 5, and then taking the derivative of this with respect to y, we would just have 3. And then in order to find our discriminant, we need to evaluate these all at point A, B. And so substituting those into our second order partial derivatives, you'll notice that those are just constants and we don't have any spots to evaluate those at. So our discriminant formula, writing that down from the previous page, is going to be our partial with respect to x twice, evaluated at ab times our partial with respect to y twice, evaluated at ab minus the second order partial with respect to x, then y evaluated at point ab, and that gets squared. And so from here, second order partial derivative with respect to x twice is just 0, times our second order partial with respect to y twice is also just 0, minus, and then our partial with respect to x, and then with respect to y is 3, and then squaring this, so this works out to being 0 minus 9, or negative 9. And so from here, we're going to use our table that's up above, or it's also written on the previous page. So since our discriminant is less than 0, we are looking at this bottom row on our table, which does say that regardless of our second order partial derivative with respect to x twice, this is going to be a saddle point. So we can say, since d, our discriminant, is less than 0, the point negative 2 comma 5 thirds, or ab, is a saddle point. Part b, right below, says f of x, y is x squared plus xy plus y squared minus 6x minus 3. So again, in order to determine if we have any relative extremas or saddle points, we need to find our first partial derivatives, so with respect to x, and the derivative of x squared would be 2x. The derivative of xy, remember y is just a constant, derivative of x is 1. Derivative of y squared would be 0. Derivative of negative 6x would be negative 6, and then derivative of negative 3 would also be 0. And then we need to find our partial with respect to y. So derivative of x squared is 0. Derivative of xy, x is a constant. Derivative of y is 1. And then derivative of y squared would be plus 2y. And then the derivative of 6x is 0, and 3 is also 0. So in order to find our critical points, we're going to set these each equal to 0, and you'll notice that for this we have a system, and so we have two variables and two unknowns, and so with this it's going to be a little bit more work to figure out, but from here looking at our second equation, I'm going to go ahead and solve this for x and say x is equal to negative 2y, 
and then I will substitute this negative 2y in for x into my first equation using that substitution method. So I'm going to have 2 times x, and instead of x I'm going to write negative 2y, plus y minus 6 equals 0. And so from here we get negative 4y plus y minus 6 equals 0. And then negative 4y plus y is negative 3y minus 6 equals 0. And then from here we can add 6 and divide by negative 3 and get y equals negative 2. And then to find our x value, we're going to substitute it back in, and you have different places you can substitute it in, but what I boxed is x equals negative 2y. So x is going to equal negative 2 times negative 2, or x is 4. So our critical point is going to be 4 comma negative 2. And so since this is our critical point, this is our a, and this is our b that we'll be evaluating our discriminant at. So in order to find our discriminant, we need to find our second order partial derivatives. So with respect to x a second time, looking at the partial with respect to x, we get 2x plus y minus 6. So taking the derivative of this with respect to x, the first term will be 2. And then the derivative of y minus 6 is just 0. That whole thing is a constant. And then taking the second order partial derivative with respect to y twice, we have x plus 2y, and taking the derivative with respect to y again, the derivative of x is 0, the derivative of 2y is 2, and then taking the derivative with respect to x, and then y. So our first partial derivative would be with respect to x, which is 2x plus y minus 6, and then taking the derivative of that with respect to y, 2x would be 0, derivative of y would be 1, and the derivative of minus 6 would be 0 also, since it's just a constant. So to find our discriminant, we have the formula d equals partial with respect to x twice, evaluated at our critical point, which is 4 comma negative 2, times our partial with respect to y twice of our critical point, 4 comma negative 2, minus our partial with respect to x, and then y, evaluated at 4 comma negative 2, and we have to square that. And so you'll notice it's nice again since our second order partial derivatives are all just values, a constant value, and so evaluating it at a point is just going to be that constant value. So our partial with respect to x twice is 2 times our partial with respect to y twice is also 2 minus our second order partial with respect to x and then y is 1. And we do square that. So this works out to be 4 minus 1, or positive 3. And so looking at our table up above, we did have d was equal to 3, which is positive. So we're looking at our first row. And so this now depends on our second order partial derivative with respect to x twice. And so if you look at that value, that is a positive 2. So since it's a positive 2, it's greater than 0. And so from this, we know that we have a relative minimum at our critical value, which is at 4 comma negative 2. So for this, we'll say since our discriminant is equal to 3, which is greater than 0, and our second order partial derivative with respect to x twice evaluated at 4 comma negative 2 is equal to positive 2, which is also greater than 0, then we have a relative minimum at our critical point, which is at 4 comma negative 2. So at the top of the next page, we have another example, C, which I'm going to go ahead and circle, and we'll look at this one together in class.